Hello everyone, my name is AppleGuy. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village. In the previous video we made our way here to the entrance of Reinhold Manor. We solved, I believe, five puzzles on the way here. And of course we're going to solve some more. Bookshelves seem to line every wall of this estate. The Baron must have been quite the avid reader. It's important to keep your mind sharp, Luke, so why don't you give this puzzle a go? Hopping right into the first puzzle of the video, that's puzzle number 10, Alphabet. Alright. Alright, here's a quick and easy one. The first letter of the alphabet is A. The letter B comes after the letter A. However, the letter you need to worry about is the last one. What is the last letter of the alphabet? Here's a hint. It isn't Z. Uh-oh, it isn't Z? That's because we're dealing with a little bit of a trick here. It's uh, asking the letter of the word alphabet, which of course means the answer is a resounding T. T for alphabet. The T at the end of alphabet is what we're looking for. It makes Luke happy, it makes Leighton happy, it's the solution to the puzzle. Let's see what the answer is. Good job! The last letter of the word alphabet is the letter T. Reminds me of when people used to say stuff like, oh hey, spell it! Or, or they'd be like, are you smart? And you're like, yeah, I'm smart. They'd be like, okay, we'll, so we'll spell it. And you'd be like, okay, S-M-A-R. Like, no, no, you spell it I-T. Just a typical elementary school stuff, I suppose. Alright, how do you like that puzzle, Luke? I hope it has prepared you for tackling more difficult puzzles. Alrighty, so we have to go visit uh, the Lady Dahlia and her friends now. We have to make our way towards the second floor, which is up the stairs using the foot, or the shoe icon. Now we will get introduced to some of characters from the game. Always important to meet lots of characters, including the weird ones, like Guy with circular glasses. Oh, and you must be Professor Layton, this person. It's an honor to make your acquaintance. Her voice is oh, no. weird. The pleasure's all mine. Oh my gosh. No, Luke. Oh, come back, sweetie. She's like a she's like British and Southern at the same time. Honestly, why am I constantly surrounded by incompetence? This is a disaster. Whatever is the matter? Oh, this is simply terrible. My dear sweet baby, my Claudia. Your Claudia. Sweet, sweet Claudia, my little honeykins, my smoochie pie, my baby, Matthew, Matthew. I don't know which one Matthew is, but I can look at some paintings. Lots of paintings and a hint coin. And lots of people to talk to. Madam, what is it? Oh, madam, what is it? What in the world happened? My little Claudia got scared and ran off. Didn't you see her dart out of the room? I, I must have missed her. I'm terribly sorry, madam. Oh, you're just useless, aren't you? Professor, you didn't see which way my baby ran off to, did you? Your baby, madam? If you're referring to the white cat, I saw it run out that door a moment ago. What? And you simply stood there and let her escape? Well, she is a cat. They are animals. After all, an animal's must run about from time to- You fool! She is not just a cat, she has a name, and that name is Claudia Reynold. Reynold. She is a delicate flower, and she is simply a mess when I'm not close to cry to comfort her. Matthew, I need you to find Claudia and bring her back immediately. About this little inheritance problem of yours, Lady Dahlia. That can wait. Can't you see we have more pressing concern on our hands at the matter? You couldn't have stopped her and you didn't. So you have a responsibility to find Claudia and bring her back. Huh, sending the professor off to find a silly cat? The nerve. Who do you think you are? Haha, <laughs> oh it's fine, Luke. Besides, Lady Dahlia does have a point. It does seem we let Claudia run off. Madam, if you'll excuse us, we'll have a, we have a cat to track down. Thank you, and please hurry. My Claudia is such a delicate flower. Even the coarse outdoor air might prove too much for her. Noise of the Manor was added to your list of mysteries. Very cool. Chapter 2, The Fugitive Feline. Lady Jolly's cat has escaped. Search St. Mysterio for a runaway feline. We will not save, because I am recording. People to talk to, people to talk to. Dahlia sure is fond of that cat. I assume you're the famous Professor Layton, yes? My name is Gordon. I'm one of the people who originally requested your services. Actually, maybe it should be Gordon Ramsay. I'd like to explain the situation further, but right now, it's probably best to do as Lady Dolia says. That's my Gordon Ramsay impression. My name is Simon. I'm Baron Reynolds' nephew. My father is the little brother of Gordon there. Or rather, he was until he kicked the bucket, as they say. But I digress. So you're the famous Professor Layton. Huh, I thought you'd have more presents. Well, never mind that. I take it you won't mind if I throw a puzzle your way. It shouldn't prove difficult for a man of your ability. 
Yes, if you're as good as they say, this shouldn't amount to much more than a distraction. Let's solve it then. Arc and line. Okay. As this as shown in the diagram below, you have one fourth of a circle. Within this circle is rectangle A, B, C, D, which touches the edge of the circle at point D. Assuming that point B is located at the center of the circle, how long is the diagonal line AC? Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a very fun instance of the freaking Pythagorean theorem. We have this length being 5, and we don't know this length. Do we know this length? We don't know the... Okay, we don't know any other length, so how can we solve this? Well, we can use a... Okay, do we want to use a calculator or not? Because if we don't want to use a calculator, we can do... Okay, so this is a right angle, which means this is a... This is what we call a 30-60-90 triangle, because the angles are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. It's, a, it's called a, a special right triangle. And, um... Actually, I think the 30 and 60 are switched. But basically what we can do is some actual math. Alright, pardon that brief interruption, I literally had to go and find my TI-84 calculator so we can solve this. How I'm gonna solve this is we know that- I just erased everything. This has a length of 5, and we know that the angle here is an angle of 30 degrees. Because uh, I mentioned this is a 30-60-90 triangle. Uh, this is angle right here actually is 30. This one is the 60. Uh, either way, we know that we're dealing with um, a triangle here with 30, 60, 90. So what we know is this: the sine math function of an angle, 30, is equal to um, S is equal to O over H. Opposite over hypotenuse. We're solving for the hypotenuse. So what we would do... We take sine of 30, we, 5 divided by sine of 30. So let's type that into the calculator here. 5 divided by sine of 30. And we get the answer 10. So I believe that is our answer then. 10 inches. There's no way using uh, an actual calculator was the intended result. So how do you do it without sine, cosine, and the notice that we're using a special right triangle? Um, okay, the diagonal line AC is the same length as diagonal line AB. It, BD is the same length as the circle's radius, so AC is equal to 10 inches. Huh. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Oh, I see. BD is, is the radius. So no matter what angle BD is at, it's always length 10. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Let me put my calculator away now. I'm on spring break, I shouldn't have to use that thing. Ho oh, oh, ho, it appears you are the real deal, professor. I apologize for doubting you there. Seems you've got quite the mind for puzzles. But, oh ho ho, how unfortunate you must waste your time on these ridiculous cat chases. They happen all the time, yet every time the cat slips out, Lady Dahlia causes the biggest fuss. Don't even bother trying to talk her down. Best thing you can do is go and find that cat. If you're as bright as they say, you should have no trouble attacking down one little cat, right? Hopefully no. But we will end up having to see. I believe there's another puzzle here in the parlor somewhere. It's here in the lights. Look, there's a puzzle hidden in here, Professor. Yep, just in the light. This is the Vanishing Cube. The Vanishing Cube. Alrighty. On the table are there are four on the table below are four cubes made up of matches. Can you change four cubes to three by moving a single match? The answer to that is yes. This is the match we move. We want to rotate it like that. Close off that there. And as you can see, we have our three cubes now. We have a cube here, a cube here. A cube here, and instead of having one here, we have the closing face. Very simple puzzle. I think I've got it. Very, very simple. Okay. Was that? There we are. Moving a single match completely changes your perspective on the shape. Was it difficult to think about things in 3D? No. It was rather easy. Piece of cake. Now let's go find more puzzles. Let's puzzle 110. Wow, we skipped a bundle, didn't we? All right, let's go ahead and find the cat then. Professor, look at these paintings on the wall here. Ah, it's a very nice portrait, isn't it? I bet that's a late Baron Reynold pictured there. But what about this one, Professor? Who could this pretty girl be? The two portraits next to each other, so they're likely family. 
She's probably the Baron's daughter. That's exactly right, sir. You are looking at a portrait of Flora, the late Baron's daughter. Pardon me for asking, but I couldn't help notice your keen interest in art. Would you care to take this old frame with you? It used to hold the most wonderful painting. However, now all that's left in it is this small scrap. We got a painting scrap! The painting office was added to your trunk. You can assemble the fragments of an old painting there. That's the painting. Of course, go to the trunk to do so. That's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. I ain't gonna worry about it for now. This is a piece of that old painting, then. How interesting! Okay. Let's continue outwards. We have to find Claudia the cat. She's somewhere. Hey, Claudia, good to see ya. Oops. Hey, Claudia. Professor, there she is! No, Claudia, get back here. Drat, she ran off. We can't stop now. Let's give chase, Luke. Give chase we should. Oh. Cough, hack, hack. Blast that burns. It looks like the engine blew out. So this is St. Mysterie, eh? The famed stomping ground of the late Baron Augustus Reinhold. I wonder what kind of tricks this old coot set up in his village before he shuffled off. Oh, Leighton, you ridiculous dandy. Just you wait. All the treasure will be mine. <laughs> okay. So it will be. There's something in this river. There's a puzzle on the screen and I will find it. I've wasted too much time. Let's go ahead and continue forth. We need to find... Uh, dear Miss, uh, Claudia. This is where the puzzle was, by the way. Huh? Look, there's a hole in that boat there. Oh, Professor, that reminds me. Have you heard the one about the sinking ship? Puzzle number 13, sinking ship worth 30 picarats. SOS! 15 people are trapped aboard a ship that's going to sink in exactly 20 minutes. The only chance for survival is the five-person life raft stowed on their vessel. To make matters worse, the waters around the ship are teeming with man-eating sharks. So swimming to safety is out of the question. A round trip to the nearest island and back to the boat takes nine minutes on the raft. How many people will live to see dry land? This is a very simple puzzle where we need to have our time on one side of a chart and P for people on the other side. At 20 minutes, there are 15 people. At nine minutes, after someone goes and comes back, they can drop four people off, which means that there are now 11 people left. Okay. At seven minutes, a team of five people can go, which leaves six people remaining. Is that correct, six people? We have 15, we subtract four. No. Look at me, I was already assuming the end game scenario. Let me go ahead and repair that. 11 minus four is seven, which leaves no time to return to the boat. Two people stuck on the boat. Means a total of... 13 people can escape. Two of them will unfortunately not escape the boat. There we go. Nicely done. A moment of silence for the two who didn't make it, please. A big 07 salute for them. Wow, great answer, Professor. It took me five times as long to get that one. Alright, well, maybe you should have thought harder, Luke. We're chasing Claudia around. Is Claudia in here? In the village shop? Everything in here is caked in dust, apparently. That's not good. We have a candles. Challenge. Look here, my boy. This extinguished candle has reminded me of a simply wonderful puzzle. Okay. Puzzle number 15. How many are left? Worth 10 picarats. 10 candles stand burning in a dining room. A strong breeze blows in through an open window and extinguishes two of them. Checking back on the candles later, you see that one more candle has gone out. To make sure no more flames go out, you shut the window. Assuming the wind doesn't extinguish any more candles, how many candles do you have left in the end? A very simple puzzle. We have 10 candles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we're going to assume, because the, well, it's not really an assumption, the game does tell us, all these candles are lit. So this is the little fire that they have. All candles are burning with a fire. Now, what we hear is that three candles go out. First is, there we go, two of them going out, and then another one goes out. These seven candles presumably burn all the way to the ground. That leaves these three extinguished candles remaining, meaning our final answer is three candles. Unfortunately, we don't have to, or, or thankfully rather, we don't have to write in our, our units, you know, on like a math test, you're like, 
The answer is 10. So I got what, 10 eggs, 10 squares, 10 people? Three candles. That's correct. The seven candles that manage to stay lit will melt down completely. The only candles that remain in the end are the three that were extinguished by the wind and therefore stay intact. Excellent work, my boy. Sometimes it's important to consider the obvious, too. Delving too deep into the implied can cause misconceptions. That's very true. You always want to be careful when you make an assumption. It's fair to make them, and when you do make an assumption, it's important you state your assumption. Uh, but in this case, no assumptions really need to be made. There's something I find charming about this chair. Oh, that reminds me, Luke. Have you heard this one before? Let's see. Hell's number 14, which chair? A new multi-purpose event hall has been built at the center of your town. It will be used for everything from concerts to sporting events to conventions. With the hall complete, it's time to order the chairs. Five chair designs labeled A through E are being considered, but all the designs, only one is completely suitable for the auditorium. Which chair is it? Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably one of the easiest puzzles in the game. Because I'm sure you all have been in a classroom, or in a gymnasium, or some other place where they temporarily place chairs. What kind of chair do you see? Certainly not C or D. You don't see a chair like A, and you don't see a chair like B either. E is the correct answer, because with the way the chair is set up, they can stack very perfectly into each other and create a very nice little layout. I don't know what I was drawing. But it was my attempt to show that E is the correct answer because of the way the chairs stack. They stack very easily. They're great for storage. It's the best chair besides like a folding chair. That's right. Of all the designs, only E can be stacked upon itself. In a hall like the one described, each event requires a different number of seats and thus a change in seating arrangement. The storability of E makes it the best chair for the job. Well done. I suppose this puzzle was too easy for you, my boy. We got a painting scrapped. A scrap, not scrapped. All right. And with that, I believe we- oh, we found a puzzle solving charm, nice. With that, I believe we're going to end off the episode here. We are on the hunt for Claudia. We're going to have to check all the village, all the doors we couldn't go into before. We know Claudia isn't in here, so we're going to have to continue our search in the next episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe, and tell your friends on my channel if you think they would enjoy it. It means a lot to me when you guess my videos around. And I'll catch you guys all back here next time for my next video. Until then, as always, take care.